Good morning. My name is Jay Damola Jackson. And just like everybody else, I'm going to tell you my story. I was born and raised somewhere else. But I had to leave because I was forced to leave. And that is why I usually tell you this that nobody leaves their country of where they were born unless they are forced to leave. And that is exactly what happened to me. I was forced to leave my country because I was tortured, raped, and all sorts of dirty things were done to me and the rest of us who were living in the swamp. Because we were rounded up, taken to the bush, and forced to live in the swampy area where we were not eating anything but mud. And up to when some of my friends' children got me out of there after two and a half months, I would have died just like everybody else. There were children, mothers, and fathers, and everybody, old people, young, all alike. We were all raped. We were all tortured. And this lady was raped with her three, two, two months old daughter. We found her hung with her daughter because it was really too much to be, to, to, to go through all that with a, looking at your child being raped, a little child, a, 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 a two month old child. How could you tolerate that? We all didn't. Believe it, but believe it not, no, not. We went through it, and we were forced to bury in a very shallow grave because that was how they wanted us to be. And also, to be frank, nobody leaves their country unless we are forced to, and that is exactly how people leave their country. Others live because of poverty, others live because they are forced to. And me, I was, I really was a very rich woman and my twin sister. But my twin sister and my father were, were killed. They were just taking their break out, taking their tea in, their, in my father's veranda when they were both shot dead for no good reason. And my children were all killed and yet they were babies. The youngest, the oldest was uh, two years old, and the youngest was two weeks old, and they were taken away. They were taken away from me, just like that. I shouldered on after my husband, my twin sister, my daddy, and were killed until when I was rounded up and taken in the bush. And, and my and from there they they helped me. They brought me up to London here with a and I lived with a friend who is called John. And then after two weeks, he took me to home office to claim asylum because it, as he said, we couldn't live. I couldn't live in the country illegally. So he took me to claim asylum. And here I am. I'm so very grateful to British people. Really, you care as I would, because I'm now one of them. I'm now British, and very proud to be British. But I'm also very sad for those people I left behind, who might be suffering up to now, because really the same thing is going on there, and nobody knows when it will stop, because the same man who had been in power for ages is still there. And I don't blame them. And I don't blame anybody. If you are, if you can't blame yourself for the wrong you are doing, then you are not human at all. <laughs> yeah. And I'm so happy. I've not, I've joined Accumulate. And I'm, I think I will study up to <laughs> I'll see where I can go. <laughs>
yeah because i'm in a very good group they treat us well we are really treated like human beings as we should be treated and we are like brothers and sisters which we are <laughs> you have a lovely day thank you bye Like coronavirus, addiction is a life-stopping condition. Um, it's hard enough being an addict who wants sobriety. Then you guys throw on on top of this coronavirus, and it makes it extremely difficult. So I have found some resources which um, I think can definitely help. A great resource is Narcotics Anonymous. Um, they have a website which is virtual, V-I-R-T-U-A-L hyphen N-A dot org. And you can go onto their website and you can join into online meetings, um, which is a great way to be able to keep up your sobriety, especially during the coronavirus. Another great resource is Alcoholics Anonymous, which uh, if you go onto their website, you can join um, the same thing as Narcotics Anonymous, uh, virtual meetings, and they have all different types. They have 24-hour marathon meetings, they have meetings for ladies, so um, you kind of have your choice as to what you want to join. Since the beginning of March, calls to the AA helpline have gone up by 22%. Use of AA chat service has increased by almost a third, and a spokesperson for AA said, online meetings or phone calls can be arranged between friends or sponsors to help maintain their sobriety during self-isolation. This information was found on bbc.com, but you can also go to www.alcoholics-anonymous.org.uk or you can call 0800-9177-650. Another great website to look at is www.actionandaddiction.org.uk. Michael Rollinston, treatment consultant at a rehab facility, offers some advice on how to cope and how to stay safe during these challenging times. And lastly, another great resource is your local council. Um, I personally live in Greenwich, so um, I have gone through a group called Greenwich Time to Talk, and they offer a wonderful selection of services, which can help not only addiction, but also mental health. Um, So depending on what borough you live in, go and check it out because there will be a lot of useful information on their website. So just remember guys, um, one, you're not alone. And two, that if you really, really want to achieve sobriety, it can happen. Um, Coming from a person who never, ever dreamed to be able to say that I even had three hours clean, to now be able to say I have three years clean, um, it's possible. And uh, there are so many people out there who are willing to help. So with that said, I... uh, Everyone stay blessed and one love. My name is Nicole DeHaan, and I'm here to give you some facts about domestic violence and homelessness. Since the pandemic has occurred, calls has risen to the 999, 49% people. 49%. This is crazy to me. But I see why it's went up. You have to understand, schools are closed. People aren't working. Not So now they're home all the time. So the abuse is going to occur all the time. And it's so sad. 
caseloads have increased by 22%. And the crazy part, 31% of the staff has been decreased. And 22% of the services now that are helping people, they can't even help them effectively because of the overwhelming calls coming in. We have to protect these people. They have to have a place to shelter, to hide from these victims, to know that they're going to be safe. Everyone's affected from this. Children, everyone in the home. You have children now that's out of school that's never seen abuse in the home, even though it was abuse going on in the home, but just not when they were home. But they're seeing it now. Now they're suffering with mental issues. You understand me? We have to help these people. You know, the son stated that 14 women and two kids have been killed in the first three weeks of lockdown in the UK. My heart goes out to these families. 14 women in the first three weeks. We're like into what? Eight weeks, 10 weeks of the lockdown now. So I can imagine what the numbers are now. Listen, people, it's time. We have to fight back. I'm speaking because I was once a victim of domestic violence. You understand me? Not one time, not two times, but three times. And I had to sit back and I had to ask myself, do I love myself and my children enough to get us out of this situation? Yes, it's scary because you don't know the what ifs after someone's told you they're going to kill you or they're going to hurt you or your children. Yes, it's scary. And you're scared to call for help because you don't know if they'll get there quick enough. Been there. Been there. I know that feeling. But after time and time again going through this, I got tired. And after a while, those licks, I started getting used to. So they weren't hurting anymore. And I started fighting back. So I'm telling you, that's what you guys, that's what some of you people have to do. Fight back. Take back your life. You understand me? And men, the men that go through abuse, reach out. To services. You don't have to be ashamed because you're a man. You're human. You don't have to take abuse from anybody. Either. You understand me? You don't have to feel that lessens you as a man. And for our children that's dealing and suffering with abuse. Come on now. This is our future. Our children. We have to take our life back. I want to encourage you guys. You're not in this alone. There is help. There is people out here that care for you, that love you, that want to see your life get better, that wants to see your predator uh, pay for what he's done to you. You're not in this by yourself. There are services out here. People, you can go on www.gov UK. They have different services. They have services for the LGBT community. They have services just for men. They have services for women without children. They have services for women with children. They have services for pregnant women. For whatever category you fall under, they have it. And let me tell you guys something. Abuse doesn't just come from your husband or wife or your partner or whoever. It can come from family members too. Okay? Yeah. And abuse isn't just by by physical. It can be financial, verbally. Okay? So if you're dealing with that but you're not getting the licks, you don't have to accept that. Hello? You don't have to accept that, honey. Okay, I had to learn to fight back. I had to. I had to physically. I had to fight back emotionally. I had to fight back. And through the courts, I had to fight back. Sometimes you have to do everything in your power to win your life back. And that's what I had to do to regain my life. I was not going to allow my predator to have my life Either way, I had to take my life back and I had to fight back. You understand me? Sometimes you listen, strengthen yourself, eat right, 
exercise. Take a self-defense course if you have to. It's time to fight back and get your life back. You don't have to go through this. You're not alone. And that's my time. My name is Nicole Dehan. Hello everyone. My name is Shahab and you are listening to the Sun Judgment podcast series. And this episode is about how to deal with hopeless. I will give you eight ways to deal with hopeless. I hope it will help you to just cope the hopeless. The hopeless feeling when it will take a place in your conscious, you did everything to just put one step forward close to your target. Unfortunately, you found out you are still in the same place. You didn't even move. Sometimes even you feel to put a step backward. This feeling in some situation bring anger, fed up, living without anxious or with sadness. This is the point you feel, I fed up and I will give up. I will give you eight ways to deal with hopeless. Just count it. Number one, ask yourself, what good is an action if it simply blend in with everything else out there? Even when you cannot do anything for yourself, just think carefully because obviously you can find a solution. Pose this question at least for yourself will bring you out from negative phase and give you more tools to think about step forward. Number two, submit all your successful record in your daily notes. If you prepare a notebook for yourself and submit all your successful record per day, you can find out how amazing thing you did in a month at the end. How much process you have made to reach your target. In case you didn't have quite much achievement in the notebook, you will find out you waste your time and you didn't put any step for yourself. Number three, focus on making your dreams come true and imagine always your target in your mind. What's your favorite result? Sometimes we add lots of branches and leaves to build our destination tree. And these branches and leaves distract us and triggered to be in a main road. This is wasting time, energy, and money. Don't try to ask yourself this question. Why this? Why did this happen? Because these are questions keep you in before and do not let you to step forward. You have to ask yourself to reach your destination point what things you have to do. Number four, put aside hostel and bustle and make everything easy and simple. Sometimes during to find a good solution, you will distract to finding again new way, again new way. And this happens, shift you to going in life margin. If you Google it, you will find lots of these kinds of titles. The easiest way to build up website. Easy way to make money. These are hostels and bosses of your life. They will waste your time and your money. They don't worry about what situation you're located in. They don't worry about how much money you have, or they don't care about you failed or succeed. They are looking for some people exactly like you or being in your situation. This is what they want. They know you are give up to reach your target. And they know you are looking for easy way to reach your destination. This is their slogan. We will make it easy for you to reach your aim. Don't waste your time and money. If you focus on the way you choose for at least six months, at the end, you will find out how much you save money and how much you are close to your target. Number five, find a multi-solution ways to extend the range of your option to choose. Just only need Focus on multi-way solutions. When you imagine you have eight options to reach your target, this field give you more reliable and trustable and powerful character. Because you know if you fade, at least in four ways, you have option to choose. Still, you have four chances. You are not fade overall. You will adjust again yourself on track. Furthermore, do what you planned and don't do anything you didn't plan before. Yes. Number six. Listen carefully. You have to practical, you have to be a practical person. 
again i'm repeating you have to be a practical person when you being hopeless you will lose your initial passion and enthusiasm furthermore you don't desire to even think about your subject because you think it will be so hard and difficult for you and you feel you cannot do anything more from now on any other distractions way that take you far away from your main subject will be interesting for you and will encourage you to follow them if you have predetermined goals and choose suitable way for yourself you will pass these street bumps don't see don't see the successful point of success famous people such as albert einstein think about how many times they failed and stand up again all medias talk about the way of famous success people but they never talk about how many times they failed as einstein said anyone who has never made a mistake has never tried anything new number seven positive result imagination for feeling your capacity instead of worriness hopeless and sadness fill most of your capacity with hope positive faith and happiness most of sport heroes imagine themselves in the first position and they are going to win definitely number eight and the last one when you distribute positive frequency to your environment such as your pet your plant and your neighbors the ecosystem will bring back that positive frequency to you at the end we are living in gives and take world whatever you give to ecosystem it will bring back to you like when you shout on mountain i love you it will reflect the mountain to you i love you like the first patient quote say تو نیکی میکنی در دجله انداز که ایزد در بیابانت دهد باز It mean Kindness brings bone river Have you seen the old man in the closed down market Kicking up the paper with his worn out shoes In his eyes you see no pride And held loosely at his side Yesterday's paper telling yesterday's news So how can you tell me your love say for you that the sun don't shine let me take you by the hand and lead you through the streets of london show you something to make you change your mind hello my name is nisha zala and i'm back to share with you suicide in homelessness Suicide is the second most common cause of death for homeless people in England and Wales. People who are homeless need emotional support as well as practical help. There is a high increase of suicide or attempted suicide cases. In a report, 1,192 reported homeless people. 156 of those people died. Nine of the deaths were completed suicide and all were male. The average age was 34 plus, give and take eight years. 
majority had completed high school education and were drug and alcohol related. Majority of the people who had died by hanging. Daily lives of people facing homelessness are stressful, dangerous, traumatic and affect their mental health. Access to adequate housing that meets a standard of living is a social factor of mental health. Homelessness can trigger a mental illness or worsen existing condition. Factors affecting mental health and homelessness include poverty, personal conflicts, death of a loved one, serious medical condition, social isolation and other personal issues. People experiencing homelessness tend to have poorer mental health. People facing homelessness are hit hard and forced to sleep rough. Many of the homeless people experience financial challenges and serious risks of finding the right support. People sleeping on the street are almost 17 times more likely to have been victims of violence, reports the charity crisis in the UK. More than one in three people sleeping rough have been deliberately hit or kicked or have experienced some form of violence whilst homeless. Pe homeless people are over nine times more likely to take their own life than general population. There are many contributing factors as mentioned also include people who leave prison, the care system or the army and have no home to go to. Many who have escaped violent relationships and many who no longer can afford their rent. With this can trigger mental and physical breakdowns and can result in substance misuse. There is no national figure of how many people are homeless across the UK. However, the latest figures showed 4,751 people slept rough across England on any given night in 2017. 15% increase compared to 2016 and more than double the amount since 2010. There are various ways to support people through homelessness. These include campaigning, fundraising, donating and volunteering. Let me take you by the hand and lead you through the streets of London. Show you something to make you change your mind. These activities will raise awareness, create support for those who experience homelessness. Overall, the homeless sector across England can play a significant role in suicide prevention by supporting those at high risk and taking an implemented approach to local suicide protocols. Ensuring those in leadership positions of change to get the correct training, safety planning and improve communication channels to speed up the response and reduce the risk of suicide. And say for you that the sun don't shine. Overall, we can all do our part to create a better world and to reduce the risk of suicide in homelessness. Thank you for listening.